Hello everyone, Commander Bravebelly here. Today on the channel, I have the Chinese Special Forces PLA Navy menu number six. Guys, this just arrived on my doorstep. I wasn't even gonna make a video, but when I seen this, I was super excited about it. This looks and is very exotic. It's hard to come by and uh, we're gonna see what it's all about. Hope you brought your appetite, cause you know I did. Without further ado, let's get the show on the road. So, I hope you guys don't think this is General Tso's chicken or beef and broccoli. Actually, apparently, it's beef with some kind of bean sauce and there's quail eggs in here, or quail egg. So that's super exotic, guys. Check out the packaging. And so I have an American MRE also to compare it. It's also one meal. And so it's slightly smaller and it's slightly lighter, not by much, just a few ounces. I'd say maybe like, I don't know, five, maybe six ounces lighter. Okay, so this is basically how it looks in comparison for size. So I'm super excited about it. It, the packaging is definitely one of a kind. It shows a picture of the plate, menu six. It looks like chopsticks and a spoon. I can't read Mandarin at all. So if there's a viewer out there that can read Mandarin, please tell me what this says, what that says. The writing looks super cool. Okay. And this is the back. It has all the ingredients, presumably. And so this has heating packets. So basically, being that it's for the Navy, you probably wouldn't want to stop, start a fire, especially inside a ship. So that makes sense. Let's open it. So it has a nice little pull tab. You see that? So you don't need a knife. To, no reason to cut yourself. And let's see what it is. So that's the unpacking. So I would assume this is something to do with heating, unless it's just like a bento box where you put the food inside. And this, no, this is the heating pack. Check this out. So it comes presentable, very nice. You know, recyclable little, looks like foam packing. Then we have these mystery packets that have no writing on them. So it's a surprise. We have some something like this. Perhaps you guys could translate it for me. I have no idea what that's for. Another packet. So this does have writing. I don't know if that's a fresh, 27 grams. So just size and it does have some kind of description, I presume, but I can't read that. And then we have another package. So very industrial. So this is definitely made in a factory. It seems like purely for the military. So I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna see what's in this bigger one now. So let's open this. Again, it has the little divot right there to open it nice and easy, just smart because you don't need, okay, so we do have a spoon, a long spoon, little shovel flathead. I never seen a spoon like this, little flathead spoon. Looks relatively decent quality. We have a toothpick, it looks like, with a happy face, with, with some Mandarin writing. I don't know if it's upside down and then we have one napkin, because it's one meal. It's definitely of good quality napkin. And this little, I think this is where you put the food in. You eat it out of here. So let me move this plastic out of the way. Let's see what we have here now. So I'm gonna open that up. And this is the actual heating pack. And it has the directions written on it. So, it says to pour water out of a canteen in a cup and then from the cup to pour it in here. I guess perhaps, oh, so it's, yeah. So look, it tells you do it out of a 
canteen into a cup and from a cup into here. Maybe from a cup it's easier to pour in the right amount of water. And then it shows you just to fold it in half. And then once it's folded in half, to slide it in the pouch. Oh, that's probably slide it back in here so it heats up and it doesn't burn you, see? Because because it's foam. That's what I'm gathering. So, I have my canteen. It's right here. This is the United States military canteen. It's plastic. We're going to open it up. And does it have a fill line? It doesn't have a fill line. And it doesn't tell me how much water to put. Okay, it probably says it right there. Maybe you guys could translate. Somebody out there knows Mandarin. Let me see if I see a heat packet. I do see a heat packet, so I'm just gonna out. See, this is the heat packet that's in there alongside the food. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. We'll see what happens. It does tell me, I think, how much time it has to be in there for. I don't know if that implies 15 minutes. Maybe. So let's pour it in. Then I'm gonna open everything else. I don't have you guys waiting. Okay, just, just a little bit. I noticed that if I pour more water into these heating packets, usually that's not a better thing. Usually the less water, the better. And it says just fold it in half. I hope that's not too much water. We, we shall find out. Let's wait a little bit to see if it gets warmer. So far, I don't feel any warmth coming out of here at all. Maybe this is an old packet. So we shall see. Oh yeah, guys, look at that. Oh yeah. We're breathing fire like a dragon. Oh man, I should have not waited. I should have put it in that packet. Oh snap. Guys, look at that. This is probably the hottest food pack I've ever seen in my life. And I was supposed to slide it in here. Too late now. Maybe it still could be done somehow, but I don't know how I could do it without burning myself. Oh, that's hot. Ooh. Ooh. I don't see the, oh man, that's hot. This is definitely the hottest. Look at that, guys. This is by far, by far the hottest heating pack I've ever experienced. I mean, this is no joke hot. It's even hard to hold. I, I've never experienced that because the Amer American MREs, they never get that hot. Okay, so I'm gonna try to fold it over real quick. Oh, I did it, guys. All right, and let's let that stand for 15 minutes. And now I will be opening these up. So I do have, okay, some, some uh, bowls. I do have some plates. So we will see what we're opening up here. Guys, check this out. Now this looks and smells like some kind of What is this? Check that out. I'm gonna put water on it because what else should I do with it? It looks like some kind of soup maybe, some kind of bouillon. Look at that, like a block of flavored soup or something. Lucky I got some hot water. I don't wanna to put too much because we don't know what it is. And I'll tell you what, I'm disappointed because I don't have chopsticks. I love using chopsticks. Okay, so I must have put way too much water. This looks like some kind of seasoning, some kind of vegetables. It might be a soup. I'm going to eat it like such, like it's a soup. Oh, yeah, it's like a broth. I don't want to spill it. I'll show you guys some on my actual spoon. But that's how it's looking. Okay. And now let's see what's in here. I hope I have enough bowls. 
But like I was saying, I wish I had chopsticks because I know how to eat with chopstick. Ever since I was a little boy, my parents, when we'd go to a Chinese restaurant, they teach me how to use chopsticks. And I'm happy about that because I feel more worldly. It's more, oh, this is like some kind of, it smells like meat. Oh yeah, this is beef. Oh, I know, I'm supposed to put this separately, I think, with that. So once that heats up, I'm gonna pour that with whatever the ingredient, it might just be rice, guys. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just rice. So yeah, this just tastes like, like a beef. And guys, I gotta show you, look, this is almost a joke. Look how little food that is compared to the size of the spoon, two spoons of meat. So this is probably the smallest amount of food that I've ever experienced for a soldier. No wonder Asians are small. Although not all Asians are small, obviously. One of the best boxers, heavyweight boxers, is this guy. His name is Big Bang Zhang. I think his last name is spelled Z-H-A-N-G. He goes by Big Bang. I mean, he's a monster. He's such a good boxer and I love watching him fight. Very powerful, heavy guy. You know, I think he's like six foot six. So you guys should YouTube him. If you're into boxing, check him out. Big Bang Zhang. And it's funny because boxing is not a big sport in China at all. My Chinese friends, or I have a Chinese friend who's my tattoo artist and he never heard of him. Which is surprising. This guy, I think, even won the gold medal. Or or he definitely medaled in the Olympics. Guys, I have three quail eggs. Look at these little baby quail eggs. So I'm going to eat these individually. Once this is ready, I'm going to plate it in this, in this beautiful little bento box or whatever you want to call it. But so far, very little food. No wonder mostly Asians are slim. Slim and little, that's why they eat very small portions, apparently. And then we have some kind of, some kind of cabbage or something. I'm gonna plate this in a second. Let's see what's in here. That looked like some kind of green seasoning kind of cabbage. And this, okay, this is just hot sauce. So this is gonna be for flavoring. Don't you worry, I'll show you. But I'm gonna pour the ingredients of this cabbage in the glass that way you guys see it it looks like pickled it almost looks like pickles okay it's some kind of pickled vegetable almost like a seaweed but it smells great very similar to something that smells like you would get with sushi that's how it looks guys let me taste it off the top oh yeah it's like a pickled it has a little bit of slight bitterness to it but it's definitely some kind of pickled vegetable i don't know what vegetable this this is it could be like even a seaweed but it has a pleasant taste it reminds me of sushi for real otherwise it, it's hard to explain it has a slight little crunch just like sushi does okay so let me um yeah, and then here is just that hot sauce that I was talking about. Okay, it's like a pepper and hot sauce that we're gonna use for flavoring. Guys, and what is this for? Man, I wish I knew. This is weird, it shows you the line. Oh, this is probably how much water needs to go in there. So you would fill this up to here, so you know how much water, but that's a lot of water. So who knows if that's the case. Guys, they don't give you anything to drink. What? They're expecting you to drink water. All right, so let's open the ingredients. Ooh, the drum roll. I'm super excited. This is the most exotic MRE I've ever had in my life. And is it ready? Maybe not, but I don't care. I'm hungry, I'm ready to eat. Ooh, that's hot. Also, I was talking about my tattoo artist who's uh, Chinese and his name is, just in case anybody's wondering, his name is Adam Ink Fiend on Instagram. So at Adam Ink Fiend, I'll leave a description down below. He's phenomenal. He's such a good tattoo artist and he's super young. 
think he's like 20, I think he's like 19 or 20, like super young and very talented. Just raw talent, so good. And he, I see him progressing so much. Okay guys, this is rice. So should I put it in the bento box? Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the box just how they, oh, that's hot. And this is not only rice, it is seasoned rice. It looks like it has some kind of beans in it and it looks a little oily or something. So it's definitely not just white rice. I'm gonna mix that up a little bit because it's all like dense together. It's not like fluff, you know? And there is definitely little bits of meat. So I will show you guys how everything looks when I pour it out. Okay, that's everything. So let me make it nice and presentable. So check that out guys, this is the rice. It looks good and it smells good too, okay? It has a it has a smell that's hard to explain. There's little pieces of meat, little uh, pieces, it looks like maybe some kind of spice, some kind of green seaweed. And the rice is dark, some kind of dark rice. It's not your typical uh, white rice. Let me try the rice by itself. Very good, almost like a fried rice. The only thing is that it's still like, you know, clumped together because obviously it came out of a bag. Mm. Very good rice. So now I will put the little quail eggs and the juice in there. And now let's put the little meat in there. Okay, we're gonna do a full presentation. The meat is pretty good. We're gonna put some of this green stuff in there with the juice. That's their little um, pickled green, pickled greens. And then let's put some of this spicy sauce, but I'm gonna try it first. I'm not gonna try it, look at that. Oh, wow. Mm, and it tastes like, almost like anchovies, like salty. And it has like that anchovy aftertaste, but not strong in fish, but it's good. It's good. I'm putting all of it in there. Okay. Just for extra flavor. Just tastes very Asian, not crazy spicy, just a little bit. All right. So this is definitely by far wins hands down the most exotic the most different type of MRE that I've had ever. And so far I'm very intrigued by it, but I gotta say this is so little food. Look how little guys, this is one meal. I mean, it's not very little, but it's all rice. So, all right, I'm gonna try a little bit of this beef just by itself first, just to give it a, that's how it looks. And I'm not sure, yeah, this is beef. This should be beef. I think it's beef. It could be anything. It tastes like a little piece of canned beef. So it's nothing is delicious about it, but there's nothing bad about it either. It's very like generic. It doesn't taste like something made at home, that's for sure. So now I'm gonna have a little bit of everything. Look, this looks like legit Chinese food, guys. Mmm. See, that spice is delicious. That spice is almost no spice at all. It's just flavor with the oil and everything. Mm. So we have a lot of different flavors. We have the oily spice. Okay, then we have the pickled, whatever it is, like um, almost like a cabbage. It's not, I don't think it's cabbage though. Um, it's very exotic for me, hard to say. The rice, the rice is very flavorful. It almost has a slight aftertaste of like maybe just a pinch of cinnamon. 
It really does. It's very complex. It's not like white rice or regular fried rice. Look at that, guys. So this is a pleasant experience. Mmm. So yeah, my friend Adam Inkfield, guys, check him out if you're into tattoos. He's based out of LA. I'm actually gonna get tattooed again by him. He's first he's just gonna do a touch-up. And then and the tattoo, the reason why he's doing a touch-up is it's so complex. The level is so high that a second session after it's done is always nice to make things darker, you know, like the the dark's darker. Maybe add a little more white. Mm. Okay, time to try that quail egg, guys. There I go saying guys again. I feel like I'm saying it less today. But look at this quail egg. First, I'm gonna just bite it in half. So us Americans, we're not used to eating quail eggs. We eat, you know, hen eggs, chicken eggs. And you could see it's like they dip it in soy sauce. That's why it's brown. I don't know what they dip it in. But it just tastes like a regular egg. It's a, a little bit maybe more smoky in flavor. But all in all, it's just like an egg. Just the outside is a little bit more rubbery, has more bounce to it. But maybe that's because they have to overcook it so it lasts longer i don't know but let me now mix everything up really well i'm even gonna break up the egg in there and then look at this bite guys check that out that's everything so now i'm gonna try some of this soup this looks like an egg drop soup Look at it. Maybe you could see it from here. But it definitely has, see the little, looks like the little shreds there, like egg drop soup. That's what egg drop soup looks like. Oh, wow. This is, I think this is egg drop soup. It has a sweet taste. It's delicious. It has a sweet taste, and then it has like some spices in there. It looks like, Little bits of tomato, let me show you up close. Little bits of tomato, little egg pieces. Some scallions, it looks like maybe. I tasted little bits of tomato. They're very strong in flavor. Little bits of parsley. Yeah, so this is like a real Chinese, not Americanized egg drop soup, but a Chinese one, it tastes a little more sweeter, I think from the tomatoes. It's actually pretty good, but it's not anything like regular egg drop soup. It's its own egg drop soup. It's the real Chinese, I think. So it's not like a familiar taste of soup, but it's still pleasant nonetheless. Guys, this bento box right here, and I'm sure they don't call it that. Because I think bento box is a Japanese word. So, whatever. This little lunch box. So good. But, it does suck that there's no drink. Luckily for me, I have my water. Guys, there's no mint, no candy, no snack. And the, <clears throat> the portion is actually starting to fill me up. So it does look small. However, being that it's rice, this is perfect size. You guys that have been watching my channel know that I have a big appetite. 
And honestly, I'm full. Last bite, and look, you can see the bottom of this, see how oily it is, and it's a good flavored oil. It doesn't taste like grease. It's very light. And I must say, from a one to a 10, I'd almost give this a 10. I think I'd give this a 10 just for the experience of like eating Chinese food that tastes good. Let's say you're in the mood to go out and eat Chinese food. And if you got a plate of that served to you, you would enjoy it. Anybody would enjoy it if you're in the mood for Chinese food. It's very pleasant, very good, lots of complex flavors. 10 out of 10. However, overall in general, it's small because there's no desserts, no gum, no candy. That's how most militaries have it. And so we have a toothpick. I don't see why you would even need a toothpick because it's such little meat, almost nothing. So yeah, and there you go, guys. So that's the Chinese Special Forces PLA Navy, the largest Navy in the world. Meal number six. Thank you for hanging out this long. Till next time, signing off.